Greetings, Algebra 1 students. I'm outside on our playground to make my video today because the sun is bright and shiny and it makes me happy. It is today Pi Day. Happy Pi Day, everybody. I thought you'd like this one too. Just found it, thought it was funny. So we're gonna do these 12 problems and I attached the PDF to your homework so you could try them first. And we're doing something called factoring completely right now. Ooh, sorry, hopefully I'm not making anybody nauseous with that. We're doing something called factoring completely. And I apologize ahead of time if there's feedback from the wind. Um, if necessary, if it's really bad, you can go ahead and um, just watch this on mute if the sound doesn't come through comfortably. So when we say factor completely, what I want you to do is to start by looking for your GCF. So GCF first, GCF. And then look at what type you have and then factor. And so that's how we're going to treat all of these. You're going to look for the GCF, take it out, figure out what type you have, factor it, and you're done. Is it possible some of these could be prime? Absolutely, because that's always a possibility. We're going to start from the beginning. So let me go through and get rid of that. All right. Okay, so in this first one, it's a binomial. Now don't look straight for difference of squares situation yet. Instead, remember that we're going to look first for what um, uh, the GCF might be. So GCF of 3y to the fourth and 9y squared would be 3y squared. Now, when we take that out, what are we left with? Well, we got y squared and then we got a minus 3. All right, now we're going to look at what's left inside those parentheses. So I haven't changed up my, um, I like the, the finger pointer. We're going to use that one. All right, so looking right here, Oh, look, difference of square. Oh, uh, wait, no. Three is not a perfect square. So at that point with that problem, we are done. Let's go ahead and um, fo uh, not foil it, but multiply it back out again just to make sure we're right. All right, so 3y squared times y squared would be 3y to the fourth. Okay, 3y squared times minus 3 would be minus 9y squared. Okay, we're good. Next problem. All right, GCF? No. 1x squared minus 4x plus 3, no GCF. So I'm dealing with an x squared plus bx plus c trinomial. So I need factors of c that add up to b. So that means I want two numbers that multiply to give me c and add to give me b. And my c and my b are c is 3 and b is negative 4. So what are those numbers? Well, that's right. That would be negative 1 and negative 3 because that's what adds to give me uh, negative 4 and multiplies to give me 3. Now don't get stuck on the newer method we've learned for the more complicated problems. Different problems, different methods. Once I have my two factors, because this is an x squared with a 1 in front of it, a 1x squared trinomial, we're done. We just put in our factors. Minus 1 and minus 3. Double check it by multiplying it out, but we're basically done with that. All right, good. Next one. Okay, so GCF, 3, 4, and 1. Nope, no GCF. Okay, but this one does not have a 1x squared, it has a 3x squared. So this time I want factors of AC. Whoops, forgot to switch tools, sorry. Factors of AC, so three times one, which is three. That add up to B, which is negative four. Well, that's the same factors we just found, negative three and negative one. But let's remember, we can't just go straight to our answer. This is the one where we have to break this up. 3x squared minus 3x minus 1x plus one. Now we factor by grouping. GCF here and here. Well, in the first one, the GCF is 3x. Divide out a 3x, do it slowly and carefully. 3x squared divided by 3x, x. 3x divided by 3x, one. We now know we need a space, and this has to be an x minus one, but that's not what I see right here. It's negative x plus one. So I have to factor out a negative one there. In order to switch the signs, I have to factor out a negative 1. Oops, sorry. Let me move that back. Okay. And then remember what we have here. We have 3x times x minus 1 minus 1, minus one times x minus 1, which is the same thing as 3x minus 1, the whole thing, times x minus 1. Again, if you're taking a quiz or a test, I would encourage you to go ahead and multiply that out and double check your math. Sorry for the thick writing there. Uh, but we have that one, and we are ready to move on to the next one. All right, 1m squared, or just m squared. So 
m squared plus 9m minus 22. So I don't have a GCF. I don't have an A value. So this is one where I can just find factors of C that add up to B. So, gosh, I really should learn how to switch tools again before I um, try to write, shouldn't I? Hmm. Okay. Factors of negative 22 that add up to positive 9. Well, it's a negative 22, so I know one of them's negative and one of them's positive. The only factors 22 has are 1 and 22 and 2 and 11. It's 11 and 2. Minus 11 plus 2, does that add up to 9? No, it does not. It does not. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have to write over top of it with a different color because I messed up. So it's got to be a plus 11 and a minus 2, and it's m. m minus 2, m plus 11. Double check it by multiplying. All right, next one, number five, a difference of squares. How do I know it's a difference of squares? Well, x squared and 25 are both perfect squares. So I know that all I need to do is find a couple of square roots. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. One is a sum, and the other one is a difference. Factored. All right, number six. Okay, so now I have to... Um, think here about a GCF again. So factor out the GCF. So it's an 8, leaving me x squared minus 9. Leaving me x squared minus 9. So what is that, x squared minus 9? Well, that's a difference of squares. So sometimes I'm not going to be able to go any further. Look up towards the top. Look at number 1 again. See, I couldn't go any further, y squared minus 3. But x squared minus 9 I can because that's a difference of squares. It's x plus 3 and x minus 3. It's very nice out here. The sun is very warm. I might fall asleep. Um, but that would be pretty funny. I'm laying on the bench next to the um, fitness course, the playground that has like the weird stuff on it. Um, the, my son calls it the little playground. He doesn't like this one. He likes the other one with a really tall slide. Um, okay, next problem. GCF anywhere? x squared, 12x, 3? Nope, no GCF. All right, factors of 3 that add up to 12. Well, obviously, very quickly, we're going to realize that that's not possible. Because 3 is prime, so it only has the factors 1 and 3. And 1 plus 3 would never give me 12. It's only going to give me 4. So that one, again, use the pen tool, Ms. LeCompte. That one is prime. Can't factor it. All right, next one. 2h squared minus 5h minus 3. No GCF. Okay, so find factors of a, c that add up to b. So... Uh, and see, this time I totally did select the pen, and I guess I didn't hit it very well. All right, anyway. AC in this case is negative 6. I need factors of negative 6 that add up to negative 5. Well, those would be negative 6 and 1. Okay, I apologize for the wind. 2H squared minus 6H plus 1H minus 3. Group them together. First pair, second pair. What does the first pair have in common? Well, a 2, because they're both even, and an H leaving h minus 3, which is what the other pair already is. And so we learned we put a plus 1 in between, plus 1. So we have 2h times h minus 3 plus 1 times h minus 3, which is 2h plus 1, the quantity, times h minus 3. On a roll, four more. Okay, so now I have 9n squared plus 6n plus 1. Now, of course, I know there's no GCF, and I could go ahead and start finding factors of 9, that's AC is 9, that add up to 6, which is B, but, but, for this problem, I also notice that 9 and 1 are both perfect squares. Could this be a perfect square trinomial? Well, what's the square root of 3n squared? It would be 3n. What's the square root of 1? That would be 1. Is the middle term two times each of those, double the middle product? It is. It is 6n. So this is a perfect square. Square root of 9n squared is 3n. Square root of 1 is 1, and it's got to all be positive because both of the terms, the second and the third term, the linear term and the constant, everything's positive there. Fantabulous. Three more. GCF in number 10? Yes, we do. Take it out. What do we get? We get x squared plus x minus uh, 30. So we took out the 5, we divided out the 5, and that's what we got. So factors of negative 30 that add up to positive 1, 
Take your time now. If you're having trouble finding factors, make yourself a table. Now, a lot of students are very fast at this because they're just really good with that computation, but not everybody is. I remember feeling like I was stupid because I didn't think I could find them fast enough. But now, of course, I, you know, I do this for a living, so of course it's easier now. Just keep at it, okay? You've got to keep practicing. Find yourself a times table app. Find yourself something to practice finding times tables. Um, or I can um, even give you the game cards that you can use to do the product sum game. Okay, so factors of negative 30 to add to 1 are positive 6 and negative 5. Don't forget that we do leave the 5 right out front. That 5 stays there out front. Right, that 5 right there? Why won't this let me choose the tool I want? Well, I don't know. It just keeps moving it. All right, well, we'll just scroll up. All right, the tool I wanted was the... Um, there it is. That's the tool I wanted. And there we go. Five stays out front. If you don't have it there, so if you forget it and you eliminate it, your answer doesn't have the same value as your original problem. Remember that when you multiply out your, your answer, it should have the same value as that original problem. All right, two more. GCF, 3, 10, and 8. Nope, no GCF. All right, so that means I need to find my pen tool, first of all. Hmm. Factors of AC, which is negative 24, that add up to 10. So these take a little longer. Remember that if it's a negative, if it's a negative product, it's one of each, one positive, one negative, and they have a sum of 10. So that means my positive is the larger because my sum is positive. All right, so if I think about factors of 24, I'm looking for factors of 24, uh, excuse me, negative 24 that have a sum of positive 10. So could that be negative one and 24? No, and obviously it's not one and negative 24 because the bigger number has to be the positive. Could be negative 2 and 12. Yes, indeed it is. Oh, I forgot to put an X there for no. Yes, indeed it is. So remember what this means. Keep the first term. Big space, keep the last term. Use the factors we just found to break apart the middle term so we can factor this by grouping. Factors of, grouping the first pair, 3C squared and minus 2C, that would be C, leaving 3C minus uh, 2. Again, this has to be 3C minus 2. What comes out of a 12C minus 8 to leave 3C minus 2 is a positive 4. And our answer is C plus 4 and 3C minus 2. And we're down to one last problem, which you're probably looking at and going, Mr. Compt, you never gave us anything with a fourth power on it. I know. But remember, whoa, sorry. Remember that an even exponent on that first term makes this a difference of squares. So what are the two things that are squared here? Well, the second one, that's easy. That's a 9 squared. What would you square to get an x to the fourth? You'd square an x squared. So if that's the difference of squares I'm dealing with here, that means that one of my factors is x squared plus 9, and the other one is x squared minus 9. Because x squared is the square root of x to the fourth, and 9 is the square root of 81. But hold on before you decide you're finished. That's another difference of squares. So you can keep going. X squared plus 9 is a sum of squares. You can never factor a sum of squares, ever, ever. It's not possible with real numbers. You'll do it in Algebra 2 when you learn about complex or imaginary numbers. Factors of x squared minus 9, well, it's a difference of squares. So x plus 3, x minus 3. And that one is finished. It just has three factors instead of two. I hope you enjoyed your factoring video. I thoroughly enjoyed sitting outside. Um, now, hopefully you did these by yourself first before you started the whole thing so that you make sure you know what you're doing. Um, but if not, um, continue to practice. Find some more stuff online if you need to. And um, remember to reply to this video if you have any questions. See y'all in class.